Yes, that's right, ladies and gentlemen. We are back in the CCPE studios in Las Vegas, Nevada, uh, for Ring Bell Radio Episode 3. Uh, I am Chris Page, a.k.a. Travis, uh, or the handler name Travis, uh, sitting in with uh, John. The glorious Mandingo Man Beast Cable. Brother, episode three. What are you thinking? I'm thinking that I'm excited for today. We have a great episode planned out. Our theme today is something that I'm really stoked to to kind of pick at brains. Uh, because you and I have been in this game for a really, really long time. Before the cockroaches. Uh, way back to uh, absolutely, yeah. Uh, way back to to email feds and and even earlier than that. Um, so to see the way the that the hobby has changed while we've been in it, even if we've taken some breaks, we've been pretty much involved uh, for the most part over the last two decades. Wait, time out. And wait, 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 wait. We can take a break. I mean, I did for a few years. Is I that, was busy doing other stuff. Is that humanly possible? Did I, yeah, why didn't anybody I, I tell me about that? <laughs> Because your workload's just one of those things, man. It is what it is. You're the phenom, and you have like a dump truck full of stuff to do every day. So it's not like you have time to take a break. Me, on the other hand, I I just got a company in the background, and that's all I got going on. You you have like 15 <laughs> trillion networks. So <laughs> 15 trillion and one, get it right. Um, Absolutely. I'm stoked for this. I think that uh, that our, our, our series is starting to pick up a little bit. Uh, we're starting to get some traction. Shout out to uh, all those that have followed the uh, the Anchor FM, Spotify, uh, YouTube pages that are that are out there. Uh, links are in the description. Uh, I think we got a we got a we got we got something on our hands here. Uh, I believe that we do because today's episode is a noob's perspective on returning to the hobby. And I am very, very interested to get our guest in here and pick his brains. Uh, he's got a lot of stuff going on, and many people on the Twitterverse will probably know him for the World Series of Wrestling show coming up. Yep. And it is none other than our friend Tim Applesauce. Well, hello there. How are we doing? Hello, hello. Welcome to the show, sir. It is good to have you on, and I am excited to have you here today. Yeah, it's nice to finally be a guest on somebody else's show, so I'm looking forward to making you guys pretty miserable and uh, put you on the spot here. Um, I, I'm going to let the interviewer interview, no, the interviewee interview the interviewer. Anyway, it's going to be a, a cluster. So it's, I, it's I, good. I can't wait for it. It's good to uh, to talk to you again, man. Um yeah, you know, obviously behind uh, TIA Promotions, did some tremendous fucking graphic work for the Cannabis Cup uh, back in July. T-shirts, I mean, time-consuming shit, uh, and, and you know, a host of uh, the EFED Power Hour that had you know ten, eleven episodes of it. I was, I was actually one of the first uh, guests, I believe, uh, on the program. And that's right. Yeah, really good time with that. So stoked that uh, that John set this one up and. Uh, I'm gonna be like perfectly honest with you, brother. I didn't know that it was your within your you know first year of coming back to the game after a lengthy hiatus until we spoke earlier. I, I just it I didn't realize that, which makes you like the perfect guest for this show. And with it being a, a John brainchild, man, I'm I'm gonna throw it over to you, brother. Like I know you're salivating on wanting to like pick the brain, as you say, uh, of this guest. I am. I am. Um, so the, I guess the point of the show always is to like give a perspective for new handlers and new hobbyists that want to see what e is about. And the best thing that I've realized about this show in all the episodes that we've filmed so far is that it isn't just the new information or a new perspective, the way to look at things all of us that have been doing this for a while have resonated really heavy with all the information that we've been covering. Even though we haven't realized it's what we've been doing, this is how we've been working for this long. These are these are tried and true methods of how to build characters and work in a, in a company, how to be an e-fetter, you know? And to see the perspective from a guy who's been gone for as long as you've been gone, um, even I, I'm also returning after a good five, six-year break. 
Uh, so while he may make jokes about taking breaks, he knows damn well that he just got me out of retirement. So, <laughs> so to, to hear about your return also been in the last year, uh, same as me is, is an interesting perspective, I think, because the, the business has changed, man, like for real. When was the last time that you were involved in a company and what was your experience like then? Well, I, uh, so I came back in October of 21. Prior to that, uh, I had been running my own Fed back in 2002. So almost a full 20 years off. Uh, that was, of course, back during the Attitude Era, uh, back when, you know, our site was on GeoCities. Uh, you know, AOL Messenger was a big deal. Uh, I know I'm dating myself there, but no, uh, I think we're you all in that got same mail. Group. That's yeah, right. That's I think right. we're all in that very same group. Hold, so yeah, hold you, one second. You... Like, I don't mean to step on you real quick, but like I remember, John, you're gonna. I think I said this on one of the first episodes. Applesauce. This may resonate with you if you were in the game back then. Yeah. Like the email days of, of of waiting around for your packets to go out, and you hear that infamous "You've got mail," and you beeline to your fucking computer to to your old oh, yeah. desktop, opening up those little role play packets and seeing who had what to say about where. Absolutely. Um, yeah, those were like the glory days. That's but absolutely aging us for sure. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, there's something to 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 be said about uh, a simpler product, right? When everything was, it, it was a smaller universe, right? You only knew the people that were in your Fed. There were only 20 people that mattered to you at all, and you didn't know who the other Feds were. You might go to a site that had all the the Feds ranked. But, I mean, you didn't know who else you you were supposed to be talking to. You were probably in a Fed with people that you knew uh, out of character, uh, people you went to high school with, you went to college with, uh, people you were related to, and that was your circle. And it's not that way anymore. Yeah, no, I absolutely agree. That was my start was guys that I was in high school with uh, had an email group that I got involved with and that was how I started into it. So I absolutely same, the same start. Uh, I think a lot of us that started in that generation kind of had the same thing. You're right. Uh, so then when, when you take such a long break and I know in the early two thousands, the, the general consensus being part of the attitude era was that faces were over the top faces and heels were foul mouth jerks. And characters were a little bit extravagant, but not really. They were all just meatheads that jumped around in a ring. Um, and the whole goal was to win titles and brag about it. Uh, so it was absolutely Paige's cup of tea. Um, and it was... <laughs> <laughs> and uh, so then coming into the, into, the lo- into the hobby now, where we have very cerebral storytelling and tools like Twitter and websites that are far more advanced than GeoCity pages and whatever the precursor to, to pro boards was, uh, whatever board you could find on wherever. Um, what, what's, the, what's it like coming back to seeing the, the new tools and the new toys that you get to play with? Well, it's, it's uh, overwhelming, right? It's, uh, you come back in and it's, it's like trying to drink from a fire hose. You're you're not sure where you're supposed to be looking, uh, who you're supposed to be following. Uh, you don't know which Fed you're supposed to be in. You don't know who the players are. Uh, you don't want to bite off more than you can chew. Um, so when you first come back in, you spend a lot of time like trying to just just uh, get the lay of the land and figure out, okay, where do I fit into this mess? Uh, how does it work? Um, and and of course, every Fed is different, so you've got to learn. You know, within that uh, microcosm of this eFed universe, you've got to learn, you know, what flies in the company that you're working for and and what your part is in, in that company. You know, you see a lot of people come in and they wash out pretty quick because they think they're getting one thing and it's, and it's actually something else. Um, so there's, there's a pretty sharp learning curve. Um, and I can tell you my experience... Uh, my first match was uh, it's just like uh, I walked in and I threw the kitchen sink at it, right? I just used all my tricks to see what would work and then just kept my fingers crossed and then things kind of progressed from there. Well, 
let me ask you this. Um, obviously, like I, I can kind of like I, I don't have I can't necessarily see it completely from that perspective. Like going into the, how things have changed from then to now, when it comes to like Twitter and shit like that. I didn't really start dealing with Twitter until like twenty twenty one. And, and seeing where that whole nonsense and that whole debacle uh, plays into things. <laughs> Knowing that you started way back in the you've got mail days, and then you come back into the the aspect of social media, uh, whether it be, you know, whatever. Uh, how was that to try and navigate or adapt to or is it something that you just don't give a fuck about well yeah it's uh, like i said before it's it's a learning curve so the the first exposure is the discord if you've got a fed that's got an active discord server uh usually there's going to be helpful people in there and in in the fed that i found uh the people were great you know i i came back and i said one of the things that was brand new was intergender wrestling that was something 20 years ago that was not uh, was not a huge part of e-fetting. It was predominantly male-dominated, or you had a men's and women's division. But now it's commonplace where you have these intergender match matches. And I said, is it, you know, is that typical? Where's the women's division? They said, no, no, no. I, that, that this is e-fetting. This is just how it is. Um, you know, and you know, I had questions about the tag team divisions, how that works. Are there juniors divisions? You know, I. I guess what I was expecting was was the old product mixed a little bit with the new the new wrestling product that you see with uh, you know NXT and AEW at the time, and uh, so I had a lot of questions coming in, and I think if you're new, ask questions, you know, because you don't want to, right right because if you just keep your mouth shut and you pretend like you know what you're doing and you fake it. Uh, till you make it, it, it doesn't always work out that way. So just be open and honest. Say, hey, I might sound like an idiot right now, but, you know, where am I supposed to, you know, what's a segment? You know, where am I supposed to post it? Who who, who are the staff members? Um, you know, who, who should I be reading? You know, those sort of things. Um, but you have to be w- willing to uh, sacrifice your ego a little bit when you ask those kind of questions because you may look kind of, uh, immature or childish by asking those questions, but it's it's better that you get those out of the way early so that you can start to establish yourself. Or you're note just new. To fed heads. Or you're just no, new. No to, you know? But note to fed heads, you know, maybe have a maybe have a an, a welcome message that you send to new people that join your company and put their applications in and get accepted into the rosters. Here's a list of links to these boards. Here's the the staff page, and here's the role play page, and here's the thing. Like, make just a copy paste version of your welcome letter that you can send to all the new roster members so that they have information like that. And if you don't know information like that, as a Fed head, you should probably get it together. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I mean, the first thing you look for when you get onto that discord page or onto that forum is is the about us page or you know who we are uh welcome to the fed you know and you're going right there because you're trying to get a you know a taste for the flavor of that fed is it a hardcore fed is it uh uh is it uh angle fed versus uh you know competitive rp fed what's what are the divisions like how big's the roster how often are the cards how long are the cards you know, those are all things that, I mean, I'm sure you guys do this all the time because you work in multiple feds, but you need to be able to grasp what the company is in the first five minutes or else it's just, you know, you kind of get lost in in all the uh, content. And for some of these companies, there's a massive amount of content. So uh, I don't know how much of this story I want to tell, but I worked with another fed this year and there was just too much content. I couldn't keep up with it. And it just wasn't right for me. Um, but there are some people who need, who really want that type of immersive experience. So um, I think it's helpful if you're upfront about, hey, here's what you should expect, and this is what we expect from you. Absolutely, I think um, 
I think one of the things, especially for coming back, uh, like my return was the Cannabis Cup, and it was actually my first ever super show. Uh, Paige has been trying to get me to do super shows for years and years and years, and I was always very against it because I like to have my product in just one place, and I like to put all my effort into the one thing that I'm working on, uh, but I had done a, a different company at the same time as the WGWF for a while. I was in the PCW a long time ago uh, at the same time. And I was writing multiple angles and spreading the character out among two companies. Uh, so it was more comfortable for me to do that when I came back and just jump right into a new thing. But I think mostly I know Paige has got to worry about that way more than I do. Like he has to worry about, you know, how this company and that company differ and what they do and what his character's doing and whatever. I just write John in the role that he's doing and just do what I'm doing and hope it flies and can, not worry about it. I, so I don't have to worry about that so much. Can I give you a fun fact? I don't write to a rubric. Any, I, I write a continuous story. So any fed that right, I but to... you still have to keep in mind the word counts and the the way that things work for different feds and like you know that other feds have style preferences and stuff like that. Uh, so so it's, I, I mean I know I, that I challenge you to go look at my work and tell me where I, know, I changed it's... a goddamn thing. I I write <laughs> Nothing, for, listen page I'm, is page. I'm, I make it no. I write for me. I don't write for other people. I write for me. I learned that a long time ago. Uh, when you stop caring about you know, pleasing other people and really if pleasing yourself, uh, you put a, a much better product out there because you're not worried about if somebody likes it or they don't like it. Cause at the end of the day, it's your story, you know, right? Like this. So. Yes. Yeah, so Go ahead. So coming back, my only goal was, uh, I felt like I needed something in my life, like a, like a, like an outlet. Right. And I just wanted to tell my story. I had a story I'd been thinking about for a long time. Even though I'd been out of e-fetting, I still followed wrestling and I still, you know, would think back on, you know, the old fed from from college. And man, that was great. That was, you know, you you never forget, though, especially your first couple feds. You remember that. Um, and I, I just kept saying, you know, what, I really should get back into this. And then I finally got in a situation where I had a job and I had a, a home situation where Hey, I got a little bit of extra time. I think I could do this. And uh and I had a story I wanted to tell. So I said, I'm going to write this story and if everybody hates it, at least they read it, you know? And I'm writing it for me and it you know, hopefully it, it's well received. If if not, you know, that's okay, but it's going to be therapy for me either way. And it it happened to work out pretty good for me. I got some great feedback when I first came back and everybody was really supportive and every step of the way it's been encouraging to hear from peers about hey, you know, this was good, try this. Um, uh, you know, it's 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 been a really great experience. I have nothing but good things to say about most people uh in that time. I hear the word most, and I'm just like, yep, let's let's segue into the next question, Mr. Cable. Absolutely. So, <clears throat> on returning, I know uh, before, all, like... How much fun are you having? Now. I mean, it's, it's, a, it's a lot of fun. It's an addiction at this point. It's I, like I've got free time, and it's like, okay, what kind of extra... What kind of content can I make? Because this is my first year, and... I'm just trying everything to see what sticks, right? And and you can ask my fed heads about how many ideas I come up with. You know, 75% of them are shitty. But, you know, I'm just an idea guy. Like, what if this? What if we try this? What You know, I made this graphic. What do you think? And it's got to be annoying for them to hear from, from me so much. But uh, I think a lot of people appreciate the content. And I, I mask it in a way that people don't recognize how many different things i'm involved in but i just love creating content that's it makes me feel great to to make the content i asked you that and and i'm now gonna go over here to john because uh again you, you know he's john's gotten back into the game as of the cannabis cup and i can tell you and this is the same individual that you know i wrote with a decade ago um uh, 
I, I know that you're having more fun now in such a short period than you've had in, in, in a while just on the ideas that you're able to bring to the table uh, and, and the notion of, you know, kind of this whole new world that's out here that you're still adapting to just as well. Oh, dude, the, the e-fetting world has blown wide open in the last five years. Uh, five years ago, I barely knew that there were many other feds out there. I definitely did not interact with other handlers that were outside of the spheres of influence that I functioned in. And there was no way to like connect across feds like there is now. Now, there are things like, um, there are things like the rabbit. Uh, there are things like, um, like I have coming up, I'm, I've been working on a, on a side project for the New Breed Foundation. For years, I've been writing role plays about the stuff that the foundation does. And I've never really done anything with it except put it in the story. Well, watching the rabbit develop and seeing how it's gone the last year, it gives me an opportunity to go and build that side project and have a foundation page and have all of the things that we do be available for other handlers to interact with and add to their story and rich in the world that my characters exist in. Uh, Lockdown Securities has been offered to the Rabbit's uh, venues. Uh, I'm going to have a section for people to hire Lockdown Securities as uh, security guards or escorts or private security or bodyguards or whatever. Uh, mercenary crews, whatever. That, that's all part of the things that Lockdown Crew is part of. Uh, and that all sprung out of a side character that I wrote four years ago. Uh, but John has cut control of the company now, and that's something that he's going to do as a side project. A uh, new movie production company coming out and under the New Breed Productions. Uh, bunches, of, bunches of things that are new outlets that we can now build on that we definitely did not have an outlet for like we do now, even five years ago. It's, it's insane how different it is. Yeah, the world building aspect of it is something that I, I don't know if it existed a year ago, but it, it's something that I've always enjoyed, you know, playing, you know, D&D &D or, uh, or other role playing type games. You know, that's part of it. I always end up being the, the, the DM when I play D&D &D with my friends because I'm the idea guy. I create the stuff. I keep everything straight. And that just transfers over into into fetting. And my, you know, my professional life is the same way. You know, I used to run a department with like three or four guys and have to keep all their shit together, delegate work and, you know, kind of, uh, you know, spin plates, you know, here and there, keep everything going at the same time. And fetting is the same way. You've got pans in the fire all over the place and things are cooking. Uh, but, you know, you know, when your deadlines are, you know what uh your responsibilities are your commitments to different feds to different projects um it's something that i'm good at so to be able to do the amount of content i'm doing and deliver on it like with the cannabis cup you know i i i didn't know how i wanted to get involved with that project i didn't want to have a match in it uh i didn't know what to do with the velvet rabbit uh so i said well let me let me sign on as the merchandising partner and i'll make a shirt for everybody in the event Which and was epic. i knew it was a stupid idea right going in but it was like it makes sense no, i think amazing. i can do it and you know once i committed to doing it i knew i was going to follow through on it so i still uh, think that you should have all of those shirts available for physical purchase somewhere and the, and those can be put in a store i've got a store set up already but uh, that's like twice as much work right mm -hmm. to to move it from one design to another. I'll say this. If there's anybody who wants their shirt put in a store, all they have to do is message me and I'll have it up within two weeks. Um, and it'd be like 20 bucks for the t-shirt. So uh, th that certainly can be done. It's just another thing. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So to be honest, once I was done with the shirts and I did 80 of them, I was just happy to be done. You know, I was cranking out like, uh, five a week for like four or five months, and 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 uh, they're high quality pieces too. I... It's actually not. It's not as much work as it looks like it is. Once you once you know how to do it and you have the template set up, you some of them were you know were done in a minute. 
and some of them took a few hours. So, uh, yeah, what really, done in like 20 minutes, I think it was total from the time yeah. you got the design stuff together and the assets to the time you sent me back a product. It was like 15, 20 minutes. It was no time. Yeah. So what really helps is when people tell you exactly what they want and they give you like a source graphic to work from. And then it's like, Oh, bless your heart. It's the people that say, Oh, I trust you. Just come up with something. And it's like, you know what? Fuck you guy. Like, like, just I don't have you, anything Chris. for you. That's all you got to say is fuck you, Bates. Uh, I mean... No, you gave me some parameters to work from, and it was actually, yours was one of the first and was not that difficult. Uh, some of them were, some of the ones that I was really proud of were the ones that took the longest, and they turned out great. So I'll, I'll name drop uh, Larry Tact, for instance. I love the design it did for, yeah. for Larry's. I would buy that shirt. You know, I love that. Um and then some of them, I wish I had another shot at it, but I didn't have time to go back and redo. You know how it is in fetting that you'll you'll write a piece and then you'll go back and rewrite it. And then you'll go back and you'll change it again. And then you're afraid to hit that send button because you're like, well, I, I can make it just a little bit better. Hey, and he doesn't do that at all. No? You just no, first not at all. He, and he, send. Doesn't, he, just, he rips them off in like an hour, like 7,000 words. Rips them off in like an hour and a half and just pushes the button at the bottom. No edits, no rereads, no nothing. Maybe that comes, up. that'll come in about year five or six, I guess. It, uh, it might be, it might be. No, I doubt it because I still can't do it. It takes me a week and I so, reread it like 30,000 times. Yeah. I get so that. it might just be a noob thing, you know, like I'm paranoid uh, coming into, into the, uh, into the hobby again. Y you have this feeling like, what am I missing? I'm missing something. Like I don't understand what they're talking about on Twitter today, so I I need to catch up. No, no, that's probably a good idea. Just stay completely just stay off of Twitter to all of that stuff, and just post your thing and and worry about you. I think that's the best advice I can give you about Twitter coming back. Yeah, yeah I mean it's 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 definitely uh, nah nah. My my yeah, profile's, it's, it's my profile's black for a reason, as Chris Page. So it's I, I'm yeah I'll hop in there now. Uh, my perception is very very much. Uh, different i don't want to see a lot of that shit anymore um, mm -hmm. i just you know i'll interact with candace when when she tags me in something because you know we're we're quote unquote married and as characters and i'll play with who i want to play with and uh you know it, it's it, it's just yeah it's one of those situations with me like i'll interact with anybody on my 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 podcasting account because that's not an in-character account that's an out-of-character account I, i'm you know i'm travis at that point uh and i think it's i'm safe to use my name at this point it's it's been out there many times over um uh, but that's not an in-character you know the, the podcasting is is definitely it's an out-of-character situation it's not pages in character so i'll fuck with who i want to fuck with uh in that regard but um I mean, it's just one of those one of those situations it can be fun but it can also be very detrimental uh to a bigger uh, situation, but I'm not going to go on a soapbox on that because I can talk yeah, about that. So, well, far. let me chime in on that. So, uh, so I've made a bunch of mistakes in my first year coming back, right? I said things that were unpopular in certain situations. I uh, maybe posted some things and deleted them right away. And you, know, you kind of learn what to do by screwing up and then immediately recognizing when you've goofed and kind of moving beyond that you know um one of the other things i've learned is that through uh through the cannabis cup i had to reach out to a lot of people ask them hey what do you want in your shirt uh what kind of design do you want and what i've learned is that some people will respond immediately they live on discord they live on twitter and they their finger is on the pulse of what's going on and other people are very disconnected where you'll get a response a few days later you know, they they rarely check their accounts. James Raven. <laughs> oh, I talk to Raven um, every day, man. What are you talking about? That's you. Oh, I, not everybody's you. James was one of those guys who, a week after I did the shirt, he was like, oh, cool shirt. And it was like, I'm glad you liked it because it's too late to change it. I've already submitted this thing. Yeah. Um, He's a busy and, guy. And I, I think that's important to remember is that when you're pitching ideas and trying to collaborate with people, not everybody are as engaged as you are. Um, and I think what's, what's really helpful is when you find people who are just as, as engaged as you and then working with those people.
not to say that you can't work with people outside that circle, but when you're equally as invested as somebody else, it makes it just a lot more enjoyable and less frustrating in general. I think that's I think that's sometimes my issue, and I am sure that there have been plenty of times where Paige has just been tired of hearing me on the phone, and like, cause I'm I'm just like you. I come up with ideas like left and right constantly all day. And my brain is firing off on garbage. That's true. And at just like any minute of the day, I come up with it. Like this show particularly, I called in one morning. I was like, "We're doing a show. It's called Ring Bell Radio. It's going to be a podcast about efetting." We're just going to talk about stuff. So when do you want to start recording? And he's like, wait, what? <laughs> I'm like, no, we're doing a show. Shut up. Just get your stuff set up. When can we start? <laughs> Literally, that was on a Saturday morning at about 9 a.m. Yep. Uh, I mean, we conveniently live in the same state. Uh, he's further north than I am uh, in Florida. Uh, fun fun fact. He calls, we're, we're recording today. And I went, what? That's I don't, I'm not recording anything today. What are you talking? No, no, no. We're we're doing this. Hear me out. And he pitched <laughs> exactly. It out and and out. there was there was no questions. It was just oh, ideas firing off of my head. Questions, brother. And I just I was, let me get back to you. And I we hung up. And I guess I thought about it till about noonish. And I was like, he was like right, yep. We're going, we're going All right, two cool. o'clock. <laughs> so, it, Chris, if you ever wonder why people have a high opinion of you or they think you're the the um, you know the the source that people need to go to in order to get your blessing and have their event go through. It's because you say yes, right? It's because they go to you and they say, "Hey, what do you think about this?" And you get back to them. There are so many people who are reluctant to work with you, who don't answer questions, or they're like, "Ah, you know, I don't know, the timing's off." But the guys that are like, "Yeah, let's do it. Why not?" Uh, those are my favorite people to work with. And I, I think that's pretty true for everybody uh, in the hobby, especially if you don't have a lot of contacts uh, on, on the front end. Uh, you're afraid to reach out to people. Uh, you don't want to embarrass yourself. Uh, you don't want to annoy anybody or bother them. You know everybody's busy and that they're, they're not getting paid to, to eFed. Uh, so when someone reaches out, like, hear them out. You know what I mean? I, Chris, I'm sure you, you get this all the time, but anybody who runs a Fed or runs a project has seen this. I actually think that we're that we're on a on the cusp of being able to monetize our hobby. Well, I'm not. Yeah, I, I mean, yes, I think we're there, but I want to throw this out. This should go out to like anybody in the game that has had longevity, like I have. I want you to really, really listen to what he just said, what Applesauce just said. I want you to rewind and go back and listen to what he said because this is where, as veterans to the game, we can be very instrumental in somebody who's just coming into the game or just coming back to the game after a lengthy hiatus. We know that this this world has changed. It, it the, the, the whole structure of the game has changed from 20 years ago to now. Uh, and we can make a difference in that regard. So, you know, I didn't think about it like that, uh, Applesauce, until you just spoke on it like that. And that really hit me, you know what I mean? Because there is opportunity out there for us to uh, have a positive influence uh, in some form or fashion. And, and, yeah, people do reach out to me a lot. And, and I don't mind helping anybody. Uh, and I've even said many times over, uh, if people are looking for feds, I can direct you. Like I can tell you where to go. What's your, you know? What's your limits? Where are you angled? Are you two K, three K, four K, unlimited? What have you? Like I can direct you on on avenues to go down. If you pitch character ideas, I can probably narrow down a better place for you. Um, and the fact that there are more people out there like me, uh, you know, I'm I'm talking to to the Centurions. I'm talking to the James Ravens. I'm talking to the Sean Warsteins. I'm talking to uh, the 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 twenty year chippers, the goths. I'm talking to the Mac Baines. I'm talking to the Peter Vaughns, the Mark Flynn. Yeah, we can fucking if we can make a difference in just one person's little experience within this game. That's one more person that could be retained. That's one more roster spot on somebody's roster that's being occupied. I'm sorry. That's my soapbox. I'm sorry. 
No, it's a perfect soapbox. And it's it's beneficial to us in the hobby to want to foster that and not to gatekeep people out of the hobby altogether by having dramas and having issues and having whatever it is that they're having. Just find a spot and a place that works for you, put your effort in and get out of it what you want to get out of it. This is supposed to be a fun hobby. And right now, we are in a golden age of the hobby altogether. The ability that we have as e-fetters to put together these huge stories and use the tools that are at our disposal to our advantage to tell those stories is at an all-time high. We are in an absolute renaissance because more people are coming back to the hobby. The, the generation of ours that did it forever ago is starting to come back because Twitter is making it available again. And there are so many different kinds of companies that have different word counts, different structures, angled feds versus, you know, competitive feds, completely Twitter based feds. Like there's so many options to do it now. Um, you know, we have more tools and more ways to express our, our art and our writing abilities and our stories than we've ever had before. And having this opportunity right now and being able to possibly monetize the, the hobby, I think, is the direction that it's moving in the future. And we're really just on the cusp of that. I certainly hope so. Uh, I, uh, f I just opened a, uh, an account on Rumble this week. And uh, so now whenever I do a live stream, it goes to Twitch, it goes to YouTube, it goes to Rumble. Uh, and Rumble is happy to monetize the content whereas youtube you have to be an affiliate you have to have a certain number of subscribers which is pretty tough to get to that amount um x the xwf radio has probably got to be close to that amount at this oh, point i Jesus would think christ no man we're that, no? That, i believe it's a thousand right John? yeah is it thousand really? and four hundred watch hours yeah no so uh, Twitch is is much less than that. It's yeah, fifty, it's fifty, and uh, three consecutive viewers. Yeah, and yeah, seven so, consecutive and seven days in a month. So I've got all of that on Twitch except for the fifty. I've I've got thirty uh, subs on Twitch. So if I could just get the other twenty, then I could monetize that. So right now, like you said, we're on the cusp of figuring out a way to make this uh, something that people can actually dedicate. Uh, time and energy into and actually you know make a little bit of advertising money in the process so uh, i think people are going to start discovering what works uh and and what we really should be doing is is piggybacking off of each other and you know saying oh well i i saw what chris put out this week and it's really good but i can do it a little bit better so watch me watch me beat him here i'm gonna i'm gonna put out something better here or i'm gonna put it on this platform or try this thing out um I would encourage anyone who's who's considered it, who knows how to uh, to use either um, one one of these uh, social media outlets, or knows how to make certain kinds of content to either collaborate or, or come up with something on your own, and then ask people to to promote it because we absolutely will. Yeah, I've definitely seen that since coming back. Twitter is an easy way to push things. Uh, there's lots of interactions on the e-fetting Twitterverse. Uh, it's pretty connected, uh, so it's easy to get a lot of eyeballs on a topic pretty fast uh, in the community that we have, uh, which is completely impressive. I have way more impressions and, and hits on my uh, Newbury Foundation Twitter page than I do on my streamer page right now by a long shot. Uh, but I've been focused more on it, so that makes more sense. Uh, but then there's also the thinking outside the box and the new ways that people are going about pushing their story. Uh, like with you, you have the card game out too. Uh, so that's a different avenue of revenue for you uh, to look at. If you can get a product like that out on the market. I wish it was a, 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 a venue stream or a, a, I wish it was a revenue stream for me. But, well, I mean, but it could be there. There are out of the box be, revenue right. sources that we're that we're creating now that right. could easily be developed into something like that. And things like your card game, and things like the Velvet Rabbit, and things like yeah, uh, you know the the super shows, uh, things like the t-shirt markets, things like real merch stores. 
Uh, they're more viable now than they've ever been before. Yes. And I think yep. that our our hobby, our community is really starting to wake up to what gamers realized maybe 10 or 20 years ago, and that all of our hobbies have intrinsic monetary value. And there are people out there that will pay to see it and be involved in it. We just have to figure out how to get the money into it. Uh, so the more we push into these corner telling verse and the more we push into things like your card game and these super shows and this interconnected community, the easier it will be to monetize a show like Denzel Porter's breaking news on Twitter or, uh, you know, this podcast or any other podcast. The, you know, pretty soon you'll be looking at we have uh, pay for feds that you have monthly dues so that they can run the shows they run. And all of the things are car driven and completely AI'd out and like designed and everything works the way it's supposed to. And, uh, you know, it's there's there's no telling where we end up in five more years with the trajectory that our community is moving right now. Yeah. Yeah. If I can. If I can add to that, one of the so the the downside of being a new guy in the game is that you you don't know what you're supposed to be doing. You don't know what the rules are. You don't know what the unwritten rules are. You're just figuring it out as you go. The is it a ups, downside or a superpower? Well, I'm the, not sure. So the other side of that coin is that you come in with fresh eyes. And you don't know what you're supposed to do, so you ju- you just do what has worked uh, in the other hobbies that you've had. So you, somebody who's new in in this game will come in and they'll go, "Well, you know, I've been you know streaming on, on Twitch for for years, and now I'm doing efetting. There's no reason I can't just do that over here." Um, you know, the people that are new to this hobby are the ones that are going to bring a fresh perspective and are going to pump new life into this game so when you create content like you are with this podcast and you're creating it with uh new pl- new handlers in mind what you're doing is you're you're pumping life into the hobby um it's it's like any company you've worked at where you know you don't want to work for a place that says well we do it this way because this is how we've always done it you know that's that's a death sentence uh you want uh not i don't I don't want to use the word progressive ideas. I, I want to say you want people who are willing to listen and experiment and and try to uh, constantly improve. And um, I think that there are there are some people in this hobby who are willing to listen and think that they have something that they can learn from every handler. And then you've got some people who think they know everything already. And those are the people that are the most problematic. Is like you said, the gatekeepers. The ones that say you have to do it this way, you can't do this, you can't say that. That they're they're the ones that really limit what this hobby can be. So uh, I hope that people try to keep an open mind, especially with people who are green and still figuring it out. You know, you never know what they can become or what they can add to the mix. So um, that I think that's the biggest point I wanted to bring up on this podcast. And it makes total sense. I mean, again, uh, if you don't, for starters, like I, I, it's hard, I can't see it from the new person perspective because I've been doing it for so fucking long. But when I hear you guys talking about it, and like it, it's reson, a lot of it's resonating. Like it's a lot of it's hitting because it's like wow, you know. Again, that's why part of why we do this fucking show. Um, it's. It's it's an interest. The whole thing to me is just it's. I've kind of just boom. My mind's kind of blown because I didn't realize, you know, for somebody who's brand new coming in, just how kind of fucked the situation can get pretty quickly. If we're, I mean, to put it in layman's terms, it goes mild to wild real quick. Um, and I agree wholeheartedly when, you know, if, if you're brand new to the game, like there needs to be a little bit of clemency in the, in the, in the oops in the boo-boo moments. Uh, because it even uh, you've, you've been back almost a year in October. Um, and, and I don't, you're still not fully integrated in like to the new perspective of the game, right? Like you're still learning every day. There's still a lot that I haven't done yet. You know, it's 
you it takes a long time to build momentum it takes a long po- time for people to even learn who you are um you know i certainly have a lot of sympathy for people who are trying to make a name for themselves and they just want a, a chance to run with the big dogs and that's the whole reason i'm doing the world series of wrestling is to try to give people that ticket to, to show that you know they've got the goods uh you don't know the name but they've they can deliver um so i think a lot of people are just looking for that chance and and you were talking talk, we'll, we'll pivot to to wow for just a second um I guess I can make, well, and if I need to cut it, I will, but uh, I've actually talked to you and Denzel and uh, Tara Phoenix. We were talking about the Super Shows earlier and what those guys can be. And one of the things that that I find very interesting about the game is, is, well, at least with me personally, and John can tell you this, everybody comes into your life for a reason. And it's up to you to figure out what that reason is, right? Like, the, 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 that's it's just a fact. Um, you were you put the the feeler out on the cannabis cup about uh, your your your. It's, it's wow wrestling, right? Wow, am I saying it right? The World, World Series, series of World, Wrestling. World Series of Wrestling. So wow, where does wow come from? Uh, the World of Warcraft stuff, probably. Hey, it's a whole different section of nerds. down below. We might get even more hits on this, so it's right. an idea. That's very, very true. Uh, so the World Series of Wrestling uh, is this super show. Terry Phoenix has a charity cruise. I had the Cannabis Cup. Denzel Porter's got the the DPI, and there are other super shows out there uh, that pop up and, and I, that we take part in, and we'll be more than happy to work with. But we've we've elected to kind of collectively work together and try and get uh, one super show a quarter out under everyone else's uh, under the different umbrellas uh, you know with TIA promotions with Terra Phoenix with the CCP stuff and with Denzel Porter stuff uh, and I and what makes me bring that up is, is the collaborative effort that goes around it and that's going to encompass what could be something that can be a bigger thing for the next couple of years if we play our cards right well, I, th- I think that's the plan is to take what everybody's strengths are and let everybody do what they do best. And, you know, if I'm uh, I-, I can do enough with graphics to make it look convincing. Right. Uh, but I can't recruit like you can. Yeah. And, uh, you know, I don't have, uh, you know, Denzel has is probably the most respected guy in the game. That That's my interpretation of him. Uh, he's the authority on EFED. Uh, right now uh so he brings a lot of clout to anything that he's involved in and then Terra phoenix has been fantastic with actually putting together uh an event that's towards a good cause like actually making a difference with with the work so uh you know everybody brings something different to the table and i think when you combine those that group you know you get the uh i I don't want to say the avengers but maybe like a like a a second class Avengers, like an Avengers knockoff. You get an X. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> right. um, it's it's yeah. I, I think it's going to be fun because I think everybody involves very like minded and kind of just want to do something for the product. Product being eFeds guys, uh, it, and it's going to be an adventure. Now, what what strikes me, um, you know, well, the question I guess I'm sh- uh, should ask is. Being new, and you haven't even been here a year, uh, and back in the game in a year, uh, you're tackling a super show. Uh, you know how how does that make you? Is, are you nervous about it? I guess ultimately should be the question. Or, or what's, well, your, what's your thought process? Uh, I think it's it's more it's more like a superior show because it's not just like a three day event. It's, it's a, a multi week like fucking month. thing. Yeah, like, it's, it's three a, months. So from from the outside, it uh, I hope it doesn't look too complicated. But from the uh, inside, it is complicated, but it's fine because it needs to be complicated to do the thing you want to do with the show. Yeah, and I think some of the hang up that some people may have with the World Series of Wrestling is that they don't understand the concept. Yeah, and the concept is fantastic. So the the concept is to treat it like a American Idol, America's Got Talent, Tough Enough, Ultimate Fighter where you bring in a field, they try out for the show, they have there's a syndicated series off of that show where everybody gets a showcase 
And then you have the finale where you actually name the finalists and the winner. And the challenge of a super show, and you can attest to this, is once you've done all the, the front end work, you've done all the recruiting, the promoting, then you've actually you have to write the damn matches. Well, with the World Series of Wrestling, I don't have to write the matches because there are no matches. This is a skills competition similar to the CrossFit Games or Decathlon or uh, like a Mario Kart is is a good uh, example where it's a GP event where you win points based on how you finish in each round. And our job, uh, myself and the other judges, is just to score each round. Is really just to referee how things are going, to score it, and then just promote it and and deliver the results um, in in a way that's interesting and hopefully different than a standard super show. So m- my plan is to do live stream re- uh, reveal of here's who made the cut, you know. And it's like when you try it out for the football team and you're trying to find out if your name's on the list. Half of the people are not going to make the cut, and then three weeks later. Another half of those people don't make the cut. And the concept is not to be, I'm going to kick your ass because I'm better than you and you suck. It's, hey, I want to see what everybody can do. And I'm going to cheer everybody on because I I want everybody to do really well. And I want to see who can, who can really be at the top. Absolutely 100% promoting that vibe. I want everybody involved to like want to proofread each other's pieces and like, yeah. really help each other with critiques and like do stuff. Like I've already reached out to a bunch of people. Uh, and I yeah. hope that anybody out there that's in the world series reaches out to me if they want any feedback on any work or anything. And I think that that's part of the thing that I really like about this is that it is competitive, but it's individually scored so yeah. that we can all really cheerlead for everyone else involved and push for all 64 competitors to get perfect scores every time. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. And it it really is a culmination of my first year in e-fetting. And it's every step of that process. It's you make your profile, you do your introduction, you do a character development, you do a, a shoot, you do a medium form, long form, you do graphics, you do radio content, you do, you know, all the, the little things, Twitter, all the things that contribute to the hobby. I want to have you know, a week where it's like, okay, this is the week where your Twitter game needs to be fire and nothing else matters. So, you know, you do three to five tweets and that's what you're going to be judged on. So it's good. There's going to be an aspect of it that ties back to angle feds, an aspect that ties to Twitter feds, an aspect that ties to, you know, anything you can think of pretty much anything except for a SIM fed, uh, you know, something that's using 2K22 or something like that. I'm not going to swim in those waters. Um, it's a lot of work. I, I well, yes, yeah. So I've uh, I've played with that, and it's not something I'm prepared to take on. And it's not fair to expect people to create their own content for that either. So, right. uh, I certainly respect with what t- those kind of feds do. It's just not going to be part of uh, the competition, at least this year. And so, so this is what I was talking about. I was earlier with the the new tool sets that we have available to us five or ten years ago a skills challenge like you've set up with the world series of wrestling would probably not have been possible i don't know that one fed would have had enough people to do a thing like this uh to really pull it off you needed the the talent pool that twitterverse offers uh to even think about an event this size uh, that covers so many different aspects of what we do as a hobby. And to see how you've put all of these kind of skills assessments together in your first year back and taking in like so many different aspects of what we do and how you really can draw in from all of the different types of feds and types of role players and types of talent uh, to, to give them all real easy access to compete on the same level uh, in the World Series is really interesting. Uh, and one of the things that draws me to it is that it is a skills test for us as writers um, to go into scenarios that we may or may not be comfortable with with the characters that we're writing for and really see what we can do with them and stretch the boundaries of our creativity. 
Yeah, and uh, for anyone who's watched the CrossFit Games, I, I use this as an example because I just watched it, right? A lot of what they do is they go in knowing kind of what the movements are, but they don't know what the event's going to be. And it kind of gets revealed to them when they get there. And that's that's really the goal here is that you kind of know, you can pre-write and plan what you're going to do ahead of time so that the actual time commitment isn't as bad as it sounds uh, at first glance. But we're going to give you a writing prompt for each step of the way. And we're going to hold your hand and we're going to put... And I've been putting out these um, a weekly video just to cover what's been going on. And that'll continue throughout the process. Is, you know, here's what to expect next. Here's uh, a recap of what happened. And if you're having trouble following along, all you have to do is just tune into that, you know, 30-minute recap show. And you should get caught up to speed. Um, the biggest challenge for me is representation in the event is getting people from enough different feds that everybody's been represented in some way. So um, we have, I don't know, maybe two dozen feds have been invited so far, but I'm finding that there are probably hundreds of feds on Twitter and figuring out how to reach out to them and get them involved is, is the challenge I'm facing right now. But um, if there's anybody listening that wants to be involved in the show, reach out to me and we'll figure something out. Absolutely. Look down below in the comments. We'll have everybody's Twitters and links and all the contact information down below. And while you're down there checking out the links, don't forget to click that like and subscribe so you can follow along for next week's content as well. Look there you go. You, you little shameless plugger, you. You know how I am. I love it. <laughs> uh, so, I, go ahead. So, this show, uh, I guess, will be out mid September, and the World Series of Wrestling starts October 1st. So, that's the time frame we're looking at. Yeah, so get those in there as soon as possible, guys. Like now, preferably. It sounds like it's going to be interesting. I wish I wouldn't have given my invitation to that mug now. <laughs> and I am super happy to have it because I am so Well, excited. I think, you know, when I got the little ticket, I I held it for a second. And I talked to some people with CCPE. And um, I, you know, contemplated doing it myself. And uh, then I, you had just gotten back into the game and I'm not even going to lie to you, brother. I, I was like, this is going to keep him in the game. <laughs> and you were talking about it. it. You were, you were, you were yep. like, I really want to fucking do this. So I was like, well, I got a ticket. <laughs> you were like, <laughs> you said, D you did. Yeah, man, you want it. It's yours. And, and as a representative of the WGWF, and I think that you're going to fucking do amazing in it. And I'm kind of like more stoked because I was in that, that, that boat of limbo. I didn't necessarily know what the concept was. And now that I know more. Oh no, I was on, I was on page one, day one. I was like, Oh, this is fabulous. I love this entire idea. I want in. Yeah. So, so anybody who, uh, hasn't seen any of the content for it if they if they check out the cannabis cup results there is a teaser trailer right before the main event mm -hmm. uh that just transitions right from that super show right into this next super event and that was the plan was to just try to recruit the talent from that show just keep the ball going you know you, you just just keep things going you know like now that that is done now here's the next thing to get excited about and I, I think that's how you build excitement in in the hobby is that you always give people something to look forward to which has developed in the last few years for real like the the hype train to leave on to the next big show has become really really prevalent as of late with the interfed shows and all of the the super cups and the the massive super shows and the big interconnected storylines uh, that the Twitterverse offers the community. I think that we've seen a lot of resurgence in like these, these really big show feels like we don't, I don't know that like we were talking when, when WGWF relaunches, we're not going to do a pay-per-view for a hot minute, yeah. uh, but it doesn't, we don't really need to. Uh, there's so many characters doing so many big super shows that the pay-per-view events can really be built up inside their own companies for a while before you have one. 
And I think that's new to the industry. I don't think that was ever a thing before. There was always the like quarterly pay per view at every major Fed. Mm-hmm. Well, I'm gonna be game. I'm gonna be honest with you, uh, and I saw something for you to think about too, as far as in the game, you as well, John. Like I'm totally uh, gonna be building some WGWF stuff to some of the super shows. Be stupid not mm-hmm. to. You know what I mean? Like that's just it's an easy avenue to get the most eyes on your product. When you go back to the Cannabis Cup. Um, I knew that I was going to have my hands full with the tournament. Uh, and that's where I reached out to feds. I was, this is the perfect opportunity. Uh, you know, I got a lot of support and still do have a lot of support with the fireside show. And I was like, well, fuck, let me, you guys want to take part in this? Like I just started hitting up feds. If you want to put your championship up, you know, you determine your winner and loser. The challenger comes from your federation. It's your show for that match. Like, you handle it. It's yours. I'll give you the space to do it in. And that's what gave us pretty much a day three. Uh, and that I'm and that I'm okay with, but I still have the old school worker mentality of, like, and I'm fine with them having their own titles with their own challengers. It's when you start getting into, like, interfed connected matches over belts that I get real sketchy about. Because for me, like, old school, mm-hmm. workers don't take their belt to another fed. Right. If they do and, and they don't go over, that's that's it. Like, you mm-hmm. lost the belt and now somebody's got to go get it. And the go get it might not be as nice as you'd like it to be. Well, that's where communication's key. Oh, uh, you know, you've got to communicate with somebody. Now, the feds, where I say, like, they, they picked their own challengers from their own federation. And they, right, and that was, and that flies fine with me. That, that yeah, keeps it I all connected to their own company, and correct. that's okay. And that's where, you know, I wouldn't do an inner promotion. I wouldn't put the WGWF belt on the line against, you know, somebody from a different fed that's not in the company. No, I would build something within my structure, within my federation. Yeah, on my to, show, on my thing, to put with my on title. Yeah, that sure. program, and, you know, or a program, because that's where you've got a lot of the eyes now, uh, which is really strange and unusual to me because there's so much, there's so much out there writing-wise uh, with, with all the, the role players in the game now. Like, it's really at your fingertips. Yeah, if I can bring it back to the topic of the show uh, – when you're new when you're new in this hobby and you're still trying to figure out what you're supposed to be doing you just want to figure out okay how do i become a champion right you're not even worried about this interfed stuff you're like i, I can't even you know i want to be the the king of my own hill i'm not worried about you know the mountains over there so when someone comes in and they're new uh, I don't think that tournaments are good for them. I don't think that battle royals are good for them. I don't think that interfed stuff is good for them. Like they just need to keep it small, keep it simple, work inside their box, build some momentum, and work out from there. The the problem that you have with tournaments is that you have one winner and you have fifteen losers, right? Battle royal, you got one winner, you've got nineteen losers. Like it's you can really turn somebody off who's really new by putting them in one of these uh, multiplayer situations. Um, same thing when you put them in an interfed thing. They, they don't they don't know what to expect. They're still trying to figure out where they belong. Um, you, you just so named you, you just named the puppy and didn't even know it. <laughs> <laughs> Go ahead. That's so. That's one of the things. One of the the things I learned this year that is not for me is I entered into a battle Royal for a fed that had like a open, it was a, what do you call it? Open casting for a battle Royal. They said, anybody can come in. And I said, sure, I'll give it a shot. And I went in and I got jobbed out and I said, well, that was a terrible experience. And I hated that. I don't think I would want to do that again. And then I went back to my own fed who was having a battle Royal. And I said, you know what? Just book me to lose it because I don't want to be under the, uh, disillusion that I have an actual shot of beating 29 other people in this match. I'd rather go in knowing I'm going to lose it and go out on my own terms. And I for think that's... All... Yeah, Dev, for all of the years that I've been doing this, I've never won a match that had more than two opponents in it. Not one time. Well, this should, and, be, uh... this should be a note. Like, this is all stuff that, that needs to be brought out there. Like, what I say, yep. what I mean by that is like, if you're 
uh, from a new guy's perspective, I would have. Did you go to the like go to the Fed head and be like, hey, listen, I'm you know, I'm brand new. I don't want to do this. I'd rather focus on one thing at a time. Most Feds, or at least back in my day in the WJB, we had jobber characters or NPCs. Uh, and you throw a couple of NPCs, you know, on, on a, several programs just so that handler can get a grasp of things because we all, well, being a new character, you, it's a lear- you said it's a learning curve. It's even with your writing. So I would always try to throw the newer guys or people that I knew that were kind of new, the NPCs, so that you can get a story going and you can figure Agree, out yeah. and, and kind of fine tune the character because – you may find out within week one that, all right, this is the idea that I've got. And as you're writing it, maybe this isn't translating the way I want it. Maybe if yep. I make this little pivot here and this little pivot there. So I feel like as, as new characters or new people to the game that you should have that opportunity. You know, obviously nobody likes, uh, you know, the, the the NPC characters. But for someone who's brand new, I feel like that's an avenue that should should probably be explored. So yeah. that you can get your feet underneath you. So my experience coming in is I never got the jobber match, right? Uh, a lot of people do get those jobber matches. I didn't get it. What I did get were no-shows, right? So they'd book me against someone who looked like they were on the way out. They were they had just kind of vanished from the boards. So that gave me some time to work out the the kinks. And you know, my main character, when he first came in, he he came to the ring wearing a suit. And then he would take off the suit and then he'd wrestle. And then I realized I hated that. But it took me a, a couple cards before I figured that out. And by the time I was actually in matches that meant something where people were showing up, like I had worked it out and I knew who I was and and uh, what story I was telling. Um, the most important thing for me was always how do I get over, not how do I win. Uh, so... There was always some type of approach, like okay, what what are the spots going to be? What what are we, uh, you know, what do I want to get out of this? I don't care what the result is. I just want to know what the next thing is going to be. I want to set up the next thing, and it's worked for me. But I, I, I feel like part of it has been preparation, and part of it's just been luck. Like it's just worked out. The timing's been right, um, and we'll have to see how the rest of the year goes. But if it works out the way I want, it'd be great. But if it doesn't, it'll be, you know, like, it happens. You know, just not my time yet, but keep at it. Eventually, the timing will be right. What I want to go back to something you just said a second ago. Uh, John, what's, one, what's, one, what's my philosophy? On what? When it comes you to have, telling a story. Philosophy. When it comes to you telling want, a story. You want the philosophy on how full your bag should be, how full no, your no, cup no. should be. I'll, how, I'll, oh, I'll, wait. I'll take it. I'll take it. Uh, I was trying to tee you up, and you, and you didn't. You weren't going to connect the dots. I didn't. I, I whiffed. Yeah. No, Which that's philosophy? Mar- marijuana say. affects the memory. It does. What, what I'm trying to say is, uh, as a character, and how I operate Chris Page, it's never about what's right now. Because I already already know what's right now. It is about what's next. And one of the things that keeps me keeps my character going is because I book I'm able to book myself out, uh, and was able to book myself out so that I I had what was next. I knew what was next, and that can be used as a tool in in the writing, right? Because it's just a cross comparison between being new to the game and being like a, a you know the, the older school cat you know the older school perspective um, and use that as a, you know a caveat in, in in some of the role plays I write I, I would t- literally call out the difference between you and I is I don't have to I don't, I don't know what's next or excuse me I know what's next I know what I'm doing tomorrow I know where I'm gonna be on Friday night I know where I'm going to be on site. You know, I mean, it's just one of those things because the story always evolves and the character always evolves. And I can see where uh, that would be kind of a a hindrance, too, because you don't know what's next. So maybe the next thing that should happen from a fed head's perspective to a brand new guy is to give them those those two to three shows to get that character set up and get the, the bugs kinked out and worked out. And then the next step would be to you know, a, a lower card guy that shows up that may not be the best writer in the world, but you know what? God damn it. They're going to be there. 
and you work a, you know, four-week story. So now your first couple of months back into the game, you've kind of been able – you're kind of able to really develop and really understand, like, where you want to go as the character, and you have that immediate direction, which gives you – you know, while you're working with this with this guy down here, you know that something else is coming, so you can start preparing for that as well. Does that make sense? Yeah, that one of the one of the things that's been most challenging for me, uh, and it's probably this is probably challenging for everybody, is finding people who are willing to collaborate inside your own fed, especially when you're playing a face character like I do. Uh, nobody wants to team up with the face because the face gets his ass kicked, right? He gets beat up backstage. He gets his gym burned down. He gets his, you know, his, uh, you know, his, his wife and kids get kidnapped. You know, terrible things happen to faces. And if you run a face and terrible things are not happening to, uh, your character, then you're doing it wrong. Um, that's. That doesn't mean you have to lose. I, I, I'm not a believer that the best thing that can happen to a face is to lose a match. Um, but I think character-wise, you need to do terrible things to your character. And what I've tried to do is collaborate with, with folks who are willing to either A, put themselves at risk in my storyline by through collaboration, or B, to do terrible things to my character and are cool with that. Um a lot of people are really reluctant to do that. They have their own thing going on. They don't want to be, uh, d you know. Um, they want to be the villain in their own story, not necessarily the villain in yours. Yes, yes. So th whenever I see a collaboration inside a Fed where there's a couple people working together, either for a story or for a stable or uh, two individual handlers working as a tag team, it's like, yeah, more of that. Like those people need to be recognized and encouraged because they're working together for something bigger than just one character. And that's been a real challenge for me personally. Um, but I certainly understand when people don't want to, you know, people want to carry the, the football, they don't want to share it. So I, I also understand that. But um, if you want to be a collaborative writer, I can put you in touch with several people that would probably jump at the chance to do collaborative writing. The The biggest misconception in this game right now, and this is somebody who's been here for 20 years, I've got 18 world titles, blah, 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 blah. The most fun in the game that I have had has been working with somebody else, collaborating on the role plays collectively because you're getting two different flows from two different people uh, and the ideas, especially if you're clicking and your ideas are there and you're in sync, it's the most fun that you can have in the game because you're you're working with someone. You, you work against people all day, every day on every fucking card. But it's that, that gratification of working collectively with somebody and telling a story and it being just it, the brainchild of two people versus one, essentially. Yeah, the, the best yeah, idea is that... That the best ideas I get are when, you know, those shower thoughts, right? When you just out of nowhere, you're like, oh, shit, like, I've got a great idea for a thing I could do. Or you see a movie and you're like, that would be cool in in wrestling. Like, we should do a thing. Or I'm going for a run and, you know, half a mile into it, you get that runner's high and you start to come up with, like, these ideas. And it's like, oh, shit, I can do all this stuff. I have to write it down or I have to text somebody before I forget. And that. Those have been the moments that are like those aha moments where it's like, oh, man, this can be bigger than it is. Um, and it's tough when you're on an island. Uh, you don't know who to talk to about these big ideas. Uh, other people aren't as excited as you are about it. And you don't want to feel like you're bothering anybody with it. It's uh, I can't be the only one who feels feels that way when inspiration no, absolutely strikes you know not. absolutely uh -uh. not my brain and your brain seem to work very similarly and i have ideas hit me all the time all the time so one of the things that you said that i wanted to mention the isolationism when we're re like for me uh the isolationism that i have coming back to the to the hobby um 
is a little blunted because I have Paige and I have a few other people around that I can work with that I already know that have storylines with me uh, that I can build on from where I'm at. But I've always found the isolationism to be kind of freeing. And if as a writer, we have to we have to really wrangle that down because it's terrifying to a lot of writers uh, to be on their own writing a story that other people are going to see and have a deadline. But that's probably the space that I work the best in. Uh, Paige will tell you, I can't even begin to count the number of times that I've been on the phone with him all week. I'm blocked, I'm blocked, I'm blocked. Night before, my brain unlocks, everything is crazy, and I spend five hours just banging at a keyboard, and I come off with a fucking amazing piece because my brain just let go of something, and it just popped in. And we have to be able to embrace that isolationism and really come up with our own stories, and that makes us better collaborators too. I agree with yeah, that. Yeah, I... I can't add anything to that. I mean, you that's very well put. Did I do it again? You did. It's twice. Oh. Cable two, page zero for keeping count. Uh, I think, I mean, if we back, let's, let's backtrack for a second because I want to make sure that we hit everything. Like coming in, you know, developing, obviously needing needing some guidance, uh you're developing the character, getting those those couple of weeks with the NPCs or the people that are on their way out, same concept. So you can get that character kind of developed. And you know, this is a fedhead perspective, and this is as new guys coming into the game, uh, you know, at this point, feel free to reach out to me personally if you need guidance or you want some assistance with something. Like, don't... I don't want anybody to feel like you did or like you may you may have felt like you just don't know who to talk to or where to, who to go to. Like that's this is a game and if we're all here to be successful. We're all here in in order to be successful like you have to be able to help people. You have to be able to uh direct in some form or fashion and you know if somebody has ideas like bounce them off of me. I'll don't listen if I tell you it sucks. Go back to the drawing board. Don't get mad. Don't get upset because I'm that guy. If you ask me my honest opinion, like I'm going to give you my honest opinion, uh, whether it's positive or negative for me or against me, whatever. I don't. I, that's just who I am as an individual. Uh, uh, you know, as Travis, uh, not as Chris Page. Um, but I don't mind doing that, and I don't. I don't. I don't. I feel like the story that we're telling here with this episode, um, it's kind of kicked me in the nuts a little bit, in a in a, in, a, in a way that. I have not looked at it from this perspective in 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 forever, and it's it's really eye opening because there's so many things now that I sit back and I'm thinking I'm like fuck I could have done maybe I could have done this here maybe I could have helped out maybe could have affected people in maybe in different ways and and this has just been it's, it's eye opening as fuck. But let me uh, I I'll blow your mind one more time. I'll, t- I'll oh, tell Jesus you about Christ. one other thing I tried this year. So I run a face character. That's my main, right? And they, they told me your first character should be you amped up to 11, right? Um, so at times you feel like you're working inside a box. Like, I have to do this. This is what my character would do. This is how they were to react. But you don't want to write that story. So I started running an alt character as well. And the alt character was the reverse side of that coin. So I run a face, and the all character is as evil as I could possibly think of. He is everything opposite. So if I get tired of writing this guy, then I can have this guy do that thing instead. And that has really helped me not get into this rut where I'm tired of writing one character because I've got this other character that I can write. And so where my main is is a Boy Scout, my alt is, uh, is not even human. He's an evil, inhuman, uh, sadistic, terrible person. And then my main is this super white meat baby face guy. And that's been helpful for me to be able to experiment with some different writing techniques, tell some different stories, and keep it fresh for me along the way. So if you feel like you're in a rut with a character, you know, maybe run a second character. And you might find you, you like that second character more than the original. Or you might find that it just helps get some things out of your system so you can get back to being, you know, yourself amped up to 11. Yeah. Uh, 
I'm Chris, I've never heard of you being anybody other than Chris Page. I'm assuming you don't run anybody else right now. Uh, you know, um, I have some some alt characters out there that are known to make a glorious appearance every now and then. It always blows my mind when I hear somebody say, oh, I also run this character. And it's like, get out of here. You're that guy? Yeah, yeah, I, same guy. Like, we had lengthy conversations. I had no idea that was you. Like, yes. Yeah, I you'll also be, run this character. You'll be surprised that there, there's there's quite a few out there. Uh, not it, for it me. It always not surprises me. But, but handlers that you just don't know until you know. Uh, oh, yeah. I'll, I'll say this. It will surprise you. Uh, and I'll leave it at that. But, yeah, no, I, I just I handle a, a, an alternate uh, every now and then. He, yeah. he, he'll show up at a super show or two uh, to do some things. But that's about it. Yeah. Um, outside of that, i just I've run always, john i've always played chris page though i mean that's just right and, and i've aged my character over the years so it's just it's just a progression like i remember i mean i will never tell somebody uh, you know as a, as a fed head we're relaunching the wgwf coming up here in a couple of weeks i've told my roster straight up like i'm i'm not here to to tell you what to write i can always give you direction but the game is about being creative and having creative, some sort of creative freedom. Uh, there are definitely things that we're not going to talk about and subject matters that you're not going to touch. However, at the end of the day, I'm not going to stifle your, your writing process. Now, and I will obviously be going out to my guys on my roster and I'll be telling them, this is what I like, this is what I didn't like, this is what you should probably change. Or can I help you get into a direction or move you into a direction that you are more comfortable with the character, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. I'm, you know, that's, that's just who I am. So when I hear, you know, kind of the, the actually, you know, maybe being exposed, basically, not necessarily exposed, but uh, having my eyes opened within this conversation as being a veteran who was blinded to all this to, for the most part. From a Fed head perspective, that's how I did business. That's how I did business in the Fed back in the day. And, you know, we ran for almost 11 years. So it baffles my mind to hear from a, from this perspective of being a new guy and not getting you know, necessarily the, hey. And, you know, I understand that, that you know, people say this is a hobby and, you know, don't babysit and this and that. And I don't look at it as babysitting more so than I do like, hey, this is probably the direction you need to go. Or I've, you've been here for a couple of weeks. I've seen this amount of work from you. Get, can you give me some of this? You know, like, and you don't have to have this publicly. You have those conversations privately. And, and I mean, if I could be in, I, like uh, Bam Miller, for example, I'll, I'll name drop him on this show. I get his role plays every role play before he posts it because I he'll ask me to scroll through and I don't mind doing that shit. You know, he's also going to be in the roster on the WGWF, so he's going to get this this kind of deal from me moving forward. We will be cracking the curtain on our return show. Just saying, this is going to be day. I, I I what I feel, and I'm not trying to turn this into a WGWF thing. It's be the last thing I probably say about it on this this episode, but. I, I mean this wholeheartedly, and it's not a challenge. It's not anything. I'm going to show people what a, how a Fed's supposed to be run. It's, it's, 157,000%. Uh, and we're going to make mistakes. Everybody does. Everybody everybody has hiccups, but at the end of the day, um, it will be completely transparent. Uh, there's no, no Fed heads uh, uh, writing as characters. There's no staff members that are going to be competing. Uh, there's no anybody. James Raven and I are the only two people that are going to be calling the fucking shots. We're the only two decision makers. You know what I mean? Like, so it's going to be wide open uh, as far so it's as unlimited word counts, unlimited yeah. RPs, right? Nope, nope. Two K, three K, two K, three K, four K. Yeah, there's tiers. Two K, three K, four K. There you go. I, I think that's the sweet spot. Show every two weeks. Yep. And that, that limit is manageable, right? It basically, you get a week on, a week off. Mm -hmm. One role play. Uh, or if you're like me, you spend two weeks trying to figure out how to get one piece done. Right. 
It's going to be interesting though, it's, and and I'm looking forward to it. I know that uh, you know from your perspective as a new guy, uh, I mean my door's open. I know that John's door's open. Uh, Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. If anybody has any like any opportunity and they want to like just splash ideas at people, I'm definitely the guy to drop DMs on. I will get excited about your idea all day. And nine times out of ten, if he gets excited about your idea, it's going to come to me, <laughs> and then we're going to start talking about it, and then he's going to go back to you with your idea. I was like, hey, think Amped about up this. to 11. Think about this <laughs> for a second. And, and, you know, whether you use it or not, it's whether you use it or not. But, uh, I mean, when it comes to crafting story and character development and stuff like that, like, I'm your guy. I can, I can definitely help you out. I can help anybody out with that. Uh, you know, you just got to have to bear with me and give me a day or so, and and I'll make that happen. I hope that, uh, you know, year two uh, for you in the game is better than or greater than year one uh, because now maybe you've got some extra avenues uh, with people to talk to and and get you going and, get you know, help you out. Not necessarily get you going because you're already there. You're, you've been here for a yeah. year. Yeah, well, I, if I can interject right here, where I am, where I am right now is we've got – this super show coming up the terra phoenix charity event yep and there are matches already set for that chris i think you have a match john i don't don't think you have a match on there yet or you can correct me if i'm wrong one in the works but it hasn't been finalized correct there's one in the works there's one that's on paper it's just not been announced yet but right so so what uh tara needs to do is there are people that want to contribute but I don't know who to challenge, you know, I, and I don't want to overreach and call out somebody like Centurion and be advice. like, hey, it's my time, you know, here's, because here's it needs to be someone who's on the level of where I am for it to make sense. So here's advice. We just kind of, I just kind of did this with my own character in the return. So I'm looking at the schedule of things and I know that our uh, pay-per-view for the world title is sometime next year. And right before that is the CCPE show. So I was looking at the roster that's already there and kind of looking at who would be involved in the world title scene because I know that that's what I want to run for. Uh, I'd love to get my belt back and actually get to hold it this time. It'd be great. Uh, So I'm looking at the roster and I'm like, okay, who in the roster is somebody that I could have something going with? And that would be right before that. And I looked at it and I was like, well, Mark Flynn's on the roster and wherever he's at, he's in the world belt talk. So he doesn't have a challenger yet at the CCPE. I'm going to do it. And I did. And I just went out on Twitter and I was like, hey, Flynn, I uh, heard your dance cards open. And I think it would be cool if we uh, if we climbed into those ropes. Let's do that. We've never faced each other. We've never talked to each other. We've never whatever. But I hear that you're the man I'm supposed to beat to be the man. So let's go figure that out. And I just picked a fight and he was like, Hey, if you want it, bro, here, you can have some. <laughs> and, uh, you know, hands rated E for everybody and he ain't afraid to throw them. And, uh, and that was how it worked out. And so I just looked at the future of where my character was going to be. And I looked at who my opponents in that area would be. And I was like, well, that's gotta be a guy in my radar. So I might as well go get a strike in or a strike out and have something to talk about when the world belt comes up. So you just look at how your story is going to angle out, you know, some months down the road, look at people around you that are in your contention or where you think you are, figure out how your stories interact. And for me and Flynn, we're both just the guy that wants to fight the top contenders all the time. So we're just going to go out and if you got challenged, you get challenged and it is what it is. So I just went and picked the biggest dog on the roster and grabbed him. On your perspective, Applesauce, what I feel like the 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 direction to go there, um, you're gonna have to reach out to you know. In this particular case, like Terra falls into this little umbrella that we're trying to cultivate as far as the super shows are concerned. So there's really there's four of us that uh, can answer that question to a degree. Uh, my answer would be if somebody comes to me with that question, how do you know who to go up against or yada, yada. My first question back is what is, where are you at? What is your word cap? What is your, where's your bread and butter? Are you angled or are you, are you competitive? Cause if you're angled, then that opens up different doors over here. 
if you're competitive, where do you fall? 2K, 3K, 4K, unlimited. Most new guys are in that 3,000 to 4,000 word range, give or take. Now, there are plenty of people that are in that 2,000 to 3,000 words and can strike just as fast and just as quick, right? Because it's always not about how long it is. It's the content that's within it. I find out where you're at. And then I know people that are within the parameters of your skill set individually. And I'll go ask them. And then, uh, you know, say, hey, would you be interested in? There's a guy over here that wants to do this. You, would you, you want to do it on this show? I, I've done that on, I don't know, six different shows over the last couple couple months in general. Mm-hmm. Just this week alone, like three times. Uh, that stuff's easy to do. You just have to, you know, talk to the su- whoever's running the super show. So it may not be a super show that's handled by you know what we're trying to do uh, annual or uh, quarterly. Uh, right. So so this is the part that makes it difficult because you've got the CCPE versus the world in January. I say, great. I know exactly who I'm going after. And we set it up and we were the first ones to book. Mm -hmm. And then it was like, well, we also have this Terra Phoenix show. It's like, oh shit. Well, I've already burned the one I had in my pocket. Now I I don't know who to, to, uh, to pick a fight with before that. Uh, you know, so maybe, I don't know. I got to look at people who swim in the same uh, well, waters as. Uh, DM me your your preferences, your word preferences. Right. DM me that, and then yeah, I'll, I'll help you I find mean, somebody. It's not gonna be right now. It feels a lot like car shopping, you know. Like I know I'm in the market like for for a car in this range, this size. Uh, you know, I know what my budget is, so I'm just kind of like waiting until I see it. Like when I see it, I'll know. Like that's that's the match. And then I'll sell the match. I'll I'll talk whoever it is into the match. But I just haven't found it yet. I haven't found the right match for that event. So, I think that's probably the struggle for a lot of people coming into and those returning. I know it's a struggle for me to figure out what I want to do because I don't know anybody. And it, it's nice to have the network that Paige has. So that and I think here's like note for FedHeads Part Two. Um, you know, use your network to help your handlers really find where their niche is. That's, that's one of the things that really keeps somebody involved in your company. If you want them to stay, then make their time there as easy as possible to find the thing that helps them enjoy the product. If you know that they're in a certain word cap or a certain skill level or, or whatever, and you think that there's someone else in the company that has an interesting storyline that could intertwine with them, Put them together. Make a match for it. Have something happen. Talk to the handlers together and get a story going. Build something with them. And sometimes it takes Fedheads being involved with the character build and the storyline build up to get those things off the ground. And if you're a Fedhead that doesn't have time to do that, you should probably have some handlers in the company that are willing to do that and really lean on them to put that together. For sure. For sure. Um, yeah, it's it's nice when you've got a fed head or a staff who's put a lot of thought into the booking. And I mean, you can see lazy booking um, if you follow WWE versus AEW. You know when the booking is repetitive and lazy and the, the matches don't mean anything. And you know when it actually does matter who wins and loses. And you know why they're, they're, they're fighting each other. Um, it. A lot of what you see in uh, real life wrestling should transfer over into fetting, but it does. It's not always that way. So, uh, but I oh, think most handlers more that are way than you think it is. Uh, I well, I think handlers it's way more that way. <laughs> um, I mean, it should be. It should be right. There, but there is a there is a surprising amount of crossover from the real the real product to the to the e fetting. So, so in in that same vein, you've got real life wrestling promotions that are that are local indies that are ran poorly, right? You've got shit promoters sure. who are screwing people over. You've got wrestlers who you know workers who are the stepping on people to get 90s. somewhere, and and fetting is the same way as well. So it's on it's the responsibility of the handler to recognize when they're in a bad situation, or they're working with a garbage person to 
if you can recognize that early on, you can save yourself a lot of trouble later on by getting out of the Fed, by not joining the Fed, by not taking the bait with uh, somebody on Twitter and getting into a pissing match over something that's not important. Um, Absolutely. I think that's that's something that we've kind of touched on on most of the shows we've done for Ringbell Radio is that we have to, as handlers, right? Um, and it's very important for new handlers um, to really evaluate what they want to get out of the hobby and really have an idea of what it is that you're expecting to get. And I know we've talked about it on this show, we should be writing for ourselves. We should be enjoying the story that we're telling. We should be crafting the story that we want to get off our chest i know a lot of people use this as an outlet uh to get through their own emotional baggage or to get through a story that they've got in their head or just to to tell a thing uh to the world under a character and just get it off their chest so that should be the focus of our building of characters is what we want to get out of our character and what the agendas are and that's why when i was talking about the isolationism earlier it's it's really when I'm introspective of what I'm doing because there isn't a collaboration going on. And those are oftentimes the best of my storytelling when I'm really evaluating what my agenda is as a character and where I want to go with it and the things that I want to accomplish. And our agendas are important. And we have to find our spot in a company that wants to build our agendas just like we do. And I think that it comes down to our comfort level. Uh, returning, brand new, vets, whatever. You have to find the thing that you're looking to get out of it and find the place that's giving that to you and you can find your happy place. Yeah, and I, th- I think a little bit of luck helps too. Well, there's you know? that. But doing research <laughs> and really talking to people mm-hmm. that are involved in the companies and like looking at the product that they put out and really reading the boards and seeing how the out-of-character interactions are. And how well the handlers interact with each other. And are there always drama problems on the boards? Do these people constantly bicker on Twitter? How, you know, how does, how does the company treat itself? Yeah. And that's a big indicator on how they're going to treat you. Yeah, you're absolutely right. Um, And it takes a while to figure that kind of stuff out. Uh, I, I mean, it took me a while to figure it out. It's like, not easy to figure out. It, it, it's not if you're just coming back in. You know, it's not. You don't, it's, yeah, it's, you're blind leading the blind to a degree. I, I can say that if I had came back in a different Fed, that I may have dropped out after a couple months. You know, I might have made it to that first pay-per-view and that would have been it. It would have been a wrap. But, uh, so when I say luck is involved, I think that first exposure you get really sets a tone for a long time. And I feel very fortunate that I found a, uh, a group of writers that were really positive and supportive right off the bat. Uh, so I hope that they feel appreciated uh, because I certainly do. And that's what encourages me to create the content that I do is to try to give a little bit back to uh, similar uh, people who enjoy the same things I do. So, um, if there's anybody who's listening to the podcast who wants to collaborate, is looking f- to produce some extra content, doesn't know how to do it, and if I can help out, uh, like Chris said, reach out to Chris if you've got ideas. Reach out to me if I can help collaborate on anything. Um, I'll tell you, I just had somebody reach out to me today and said, hey, I would love a new set of belts for the whole Fed. I uh, think you can help me out. And I said, no, I don't want to do that. I've never done it. And then an hour later, I, I said, yeah, I'll do it. Yeah. yeah it, and now I feel compelled to do it. Like, if I, I'm going to do it, and I'm going to do it right, and it's going to look badass, because if I say no, it's going to burn me up. You know, it's all I'm going to be able to think about for the next couple of days. You've been uh, one tremendous guest uh, for this program. Absolutely have. All right. It's been a right pleasure on. having you on for sure. Yeah, no, I'm, I'm sure so I could... glad that you were free and could join us. Yeah, no, absolutely. Uh I'm sure I could keep you up for another couple hours, but uh Oh well uh, and this is the and this is the issue that we have because we love to talk about this and it's the passion that we have and yeah. why we have the show. Uh so the whole purpose of the show is is just this to have these conversations. And I think every show that we've done so far has tackled a topic 
that we have not really looked at and analyzed without having these conversations. And being able to have these discussions and have this panel really open up about topics that are important, not just to the guys that have done this for a long time, but especially for the guys that are just coming in, just being exposed to the hobby and how they can have an enjoyable time and be involved with us so that we can enrich everyone's ability to tell their story is really the goal for this show. And I think this episode especially is as Open Pages Eyes. Uh, even you know, from my perspective of returning and your perspective of returning, um, being involved for so long on consistent basis is not the same as just jumping back in. And the the way that we can approach this is all together, and that's what this show's about, and that's what uh, Ringbell Radio really is: is to put more information out there and to bring our community a lot closer together, so that we can share information together and get these collaborations and these big super shows and tell these stories that are bigger than we are. Yeah. If I can leave on one more note, um, a good, I don't know if he's a good friend of mine, but uh, a handler that helped me out early on, a guy by the name of Matt Knox was one of the, (laughs) one of the first guys who, you know, sent me direct messages in my fed said, hey, man, it was great to work with you as a tag team. You know, we really clicked, like, right off the bat. It's been great. And I, I've i been able to bounce ideas off him every step of the way. And for for all the criticisms that he gets, he's been nothing but nice to me and has been supportive. And I've done everything I, I could to, to help him along the way. Um, he's... It's been really nice to have somebody there to I, – I don't, I don't know where I was going with this, but uh, – Oh, it, I, can, it's I been... can jump on that train real quick because, <laughs> I, I mean, I don't, I don't know. I've heard the stories about some of the stuff with Knox. I've worked with Knox for like the last four months on a storyline uh, with Chris, Chris Page. Every conversation that I've had has been pleasant. The entire angle has been discussed – numerous times to to get to the end game i yeah i i can i don't know i don't, I don't know what the okay so i i remember what i was going to say the bit of advice he gave me was that as someone who's been in the game for a long time he has kind of reached his peak right he's retiring his character he is looking to consolidate the number of feds that he's in uh and he's kind of you know i, I don't want to say on the way down but uh, he's he's trying to get a little bit smaller in his scope of work that he's doing. Me, on the other hand, I, my trajectory is I'm on the way up. You know, I, I'm still on the chase. I'm still chasing the title. And he he said it's it's a lot more fun on the way up, chasing that title, discovering who you are, uh, learning uh, a lot about yourself, um, and that you should appreciate the the climb. Uh, because once you get to the top, it's it gets lonely up there, you know, and uh, it's not as fun after after that. So uh, I will tell you that it's this first year has been a lot of fun for me, and and I think for other people who haven't gotten their first world world title yet, or they haven't uh, accomplished their goal yet, this it, it's so much more fun. And if you have gotten there, pick a higher goal, you know keep going because could the climb is worth it um it, and i i think i'll leave it at that you're absolutely correct though uh and knox is correct in that statement and you, know, you always got to figure out again what's next as long as you have what's next you're okay it's when that's what next is not there when you've been in the yeah. game as long as i've been in the game uh and thankfully on my side of the coin like i've been able to work out pretty much my retirement yeah, you know, as as to when the the character is going to just stop all the way around on the in in ring, obviously, uh, and and just do other things. Um, John, man, John's gonna be like Terry Borden. You've got me up late on a school night. I know. <laughs> yeah, no, John's gonna be like Terry Borden. He's gonna go until he dies. Yeah, he's gonna, <laughs> he's gonna be he's gonna be a hundred and seven years old wrestling his brains out. Well, I got one more question for you, Applesauce, and this is just okay, a, shoot. a me thing. Um, 
how interested would you be to come back and do another show? Oh, sure. For, for sure. We will uh, out. You've been a great guest and, and the insight that you have. I'm just, gonna, I'm one of those, I mean, just this, it was, John called it, but this conversation alone has blown my mind in so many different ways because of the perception of, of someone who is brand new coming in. And while John's just coming back, he was here for a decade plus and you know so there's the, the mindset's a little different um is there anything else you want to say to the listeners before we close this one out no no i mean follow the world series of wrestling that's the next big event 64 different handlers are going to be involved plus some other people behind the scenes uh, it's a positive it's a, it's an event based on positivity and support from the whole community so uh it's going to be a good thing there's no losers in that event and uh hopefully the content kicks ass streaming content videos that sort of stuff uh i i've i've promised a lot so i need to deliver on it and uh i think i can and will if um i promised a lot with the cannabis cup and delivered on that so uh if that's any indication of the the amount of work that that i can deliver then you should uh you should believe that this is going to be every bit just as as good if not better because it you know it's this is a you thing you know this is you putting this on it's your stamp it's your product it, it's yeah I, i'm looking forward to seeing it um, yeah finale is on christmas eve so it'll be a nice little christmas present to the to the community to the hobby and uh i think people are going to be really happy with it so let's see how it goes well, you've been great, my man. Appreciate it. Mr. Cable. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Number Absolutely. Three. Mr. Applesauce, it has been a fabulous pleasure having you on the show. I'm so glad that you could make it. Now yeah. I cannot wait to have you back on to do another one. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, hit me up. Collaborate. This is awesome. Uh, Buster Gloves, Guy Manson, Champions Advantage Performance Center, uh, and World He's Series of Wrestling. as fingers and pots as you have. Almost. <laughs> Almost. He's getting there. He's getting there. Uh, that's number three. Uh, three in. What uh, What are we thinking for, for number four? Oh, man. There's so many topics, so many things. I know that we want to explore the toxicity issue. I know that we want to explore. Uh, Careful uh, with I that one. Want to do. Uh, oh, it, I'm ready. It is a touchy thing, oh, I'm but ready. we're... I it's think just between the two dark of us, side of the ring, you know. <laughs> yeah, I think between the two of us, uh, we've handled enough of the controversial stuff that we've got a good grasp on it, and we've both got a pretty good brain in us about how to handle it. So I think the conversation will be good. Um, so it's definitely something we want to tackle as a topic. Again, this show is about handling those hard discussions and having them uh, so that we can open up the platform so that other people can talk about them too. Um, I know that I definitely want to do the concerning fed heads episode, uh, you know, things that fed heads should be concerned with and running a company and, and how to do so and, and be moderators between the handlers, uh, in an efficient manner and things that really go into the designing of a fed. Um, but we've got lots of ideas, you know, I've got a billion of them. So, you know, future episodes are, are a dime a dozen and we've got plenty of them in the can. So. Yeah, absolutely. If you can steal any content from my uh, eFed Power Hour stuff, I mean, it's kind of in the same vein, right? Just general eFed topics, not, you know, it's not a deep dive of anybody's history or their Fed or what's going on. It's more generalized. Uh, I think that's what you guys are aiming for there. So be my guest. For sure. um, one other thing. And uh, I'll I'll leave off with this. Uh, I do uh, a, f a weekly out of character article through the Champions Advantage Performance Center. I, I did the first one I did was the thirteen kind of heels in wrestling, and people really gave me a lot of shit for that. Uh, but I've got like twenty different articles that I've written, and every week is like a different like thing, like. Uh, you know how how to book a card, how to how to do this, but it's all written content. Yeah, um, those are definitely the kinds of topics that I want to cover later in the series for sure. Yeah, yeah. So I I don't know if anybody actually reads those things, but I have fun writing them. 
Um, That's all that fucking matters. Every, every, every week. Which is I what the entire hobby's about. <laughs> every time I play one, I go, that's the last one. I'm done. That's no more after this. No more. And then Friday comes up, and I'm like, ah, fuck it. I'll, I'll Google eFeds online and see what kind of article I can find, and then I'll you know, modify it and make it directed towards our hobby. So I, I think it would be nice if we had like a, a hub for that kind of information. Uh, I don't know if there is one already or not, but well, we're uh, building would... one right here. So, guys, again, don't forget down below where all our links are to our contacts is also that subscribe button and the bell where you can catch up with our content every week right here at Ringbell Radio. Yeah, I I didn't realize we were still live. All right. <laughs> yeah, we're still recording. I, I was okay. we're, we're almost done. I was trying to wrap it up and. Uh... And that usually, you know, ends with me and Cable going back and forth for a second, and then uh, I kick okay, it over. Well, I'll, I'll let you guys have it then. <laughs> so, yeah, it, I was asking you, John, what's num- what's our next episode going to be? Uh, I didn't really quite get an answer, and that's okay because we have plenty of time to figure that one out. And we have plenty of time to talk about it. Uh, however, it is you know, I'm old, and it's getting past my bedtime. Uh, Same. This is. Uh, this has been a CCP Podcasting Productions, and John, why don't you go ahead and take us out? We love each and every one of your faces here at Ring Bell Radio. We love having you guys as viewers and listeners out there in the Twitterverse and the eFettingverse worldwide, globally. We want to remind you guys that you never know exactly what's going on in somebody's life. You can always give a smile, a nod, make their day better by treating somebody the way that you would like to be treated. And I, for one, enjoy having you here with us every week at Ring Bell Radio, and I hope you join us next week right here on Spotify or YouTube, wherever you find our content. We'll talk to you soon.